quick note on using this tree skirt, it's wise for this one to place the base of your tree, then the tree skirt, and then continue to put your tree up. This pattern does not have an opening for this tree skirt due to the type of stitches that are used, so just be sure to plan accordingly when placing up your Christmas tree. This is my favorite time of year to decorate my home and my favorite thing about crocheting is customizing my home decor pieces. So welcome to this video to make the Pine Fair Isle tree skirt. Today I'll be using the Wool Ease yarn. It's thick and quick. It's a bulky six weight. Um, I like this for this project because it's just such a nice yarn with a little bit of wool mix to help out with that color work. I'm going to be working with Fisherman's um, color for my color A. My color B is going to be this succulent color. And my last color is going to be this one, which is the driftwood. I also want to know I'm throwing in this tassel maker in the video because I might end up putting some tassels on the very end. And I do find this tassel maker really nice. That's kind of one of those finishing touches. I like to decide when I get there. But if you decide you want tassels around the edges of your tree skirt, feel free to add that in. Then we will need a nine millimeter crochet hook. This one is a streamlined from Furl's Crochet. Um, then I also made myself one. I wanted one a bit longer. So I bought a lathe uh, this last month and I made my first crochet hook. If you've ever wanted to do that, um, it's actually not as hard as I thought it would be. This was only a few days in of playing out the new lathe and I have a new nine millimeter hook I thought I would use for this project. You'll also need some scissors a yarn needle to weave in those ends, and a stitch marker to keep track of your rounds. Let's get started. I'm going to be starting with my color A, and I'm going to create a slip knot and place that onto my hook. Then I'm going to chain 24. So now that we have our chains of 24 stitches, I'm going to start working in the round and I'm going to be working 24 single crochet stitches. I'm not doing a joining chain. I'm simply going to mark that very first stitch in my round, which you'll want to get used to doing for this pattern. We're working continuously. We're not going to be joining. So we want to go ahead and mark that very first stitch. Then I'm going to simply single crochet into each stitch around and have 24 single crochet stitches. Now that we're all the way back around, we do have a bit of a jog here. You can substitute this round by just simply doing um, a row of foundation single crochets, and then we're going to just start working into the very first um, stitch of the round. Um, for this next round, though, we're going to start working in double crochets. I'm going to move my stitch marker. I'm not going to worry about this jog here at the beginning because we're going to use our tail end later to kind of weave that in and blend it so that it's not noticeable. So for the very first stitch in this round, we are simply going to do two double crochet stitches into that very first stitch. And we're going to mark the very first double crochet of this round. Then we're going to double crochet into the next stitch. And then this is our repeat. We're doing two double crochets into the next. And then after that, we'll do one double crochet into the next stitch. And we're going to repeat that around. So do two double crochets into one stitch and then one single double crochet. Repeat that around and you'll increase by 12 stitches. We're going to be increasing by 12 stitches on every round. So finish this round and then we'll come on back for round three. We're ready for round three and I want you to notice the pattern that's going to be happening and we're going to keep repeating for every single round for a little while. So for our very first stitch of the round, we're going to do two double crochets. And then we're going to mark the very first stitch. And now instead of doing a double crochet into the next one, we're going to do a double crochet into each of the next two. And this is the number that's going to increase every single round. We'll start by doing two double crochets and then we're going to do a double crochet into each of the next two and that's our repeat around. Then come back for round three and I think you'll really start to see this increasing pattern taking shape. So two double crochets into a stitch and then double crochet into each of the next two all the way around increasing by 12 stitches. All right, so for round four, we're going to start the same way we did the last couple rounds and we're going to start by doing two double crochets into the next stitch. 
mark the first stitch of the round, and now we're going to double crochet into each of the next three. So that's the number that's increasing for each round is just how many double crochet stitches you're doing in between your increases. And you'll also note that your increase will always happen in the first stitch of the one, the set that increased from the round below. So once again, for this round, it's two double crochets into the next stitch and then double crochet into each of the next three stitches. And that's our repeat around. And I just wanna know, I'm not gonna keep showing every single round on camera. Cause so the next round after this would be to do two double crochets into the first and double crochet into the next four stitches. And then it will be five stitches and six stitches. And we're just gonna keep doing that pattern until we've increased to 192 stitches. So keep working that up and then come on back. Now that I have all my rounds worked up, I am doing the largest size listed in the pattern. But remember, if you wanna stop sooner, it will make the um, overall result much smaller. And I have a few size listed in this pattern so that you can make whatever fits your home decor. Now for this next part, we're going to start working in the color work section, but this round, our first round of color work in the single crochet stitches will actually be done continuing in the same color, the color A. It will introduce um, how we wanna work these stitches coming up and get us set up to be working this continuously in the round because we're switching from a taller stitch to a shorter stitch. So I'm going to move my stitch marker. We're actually gonna be moving the placement of our beginning of the round. For the setup part of this, we are going to do a half double crochet into the next and then a single crochet into the next. What that does is it will help even out this to not be such an aggressive jog from a high stitch to a low stitch. Now this next part is round one of the color work and we're going to place the stitch marker in a new place, a new beginning of the round for the remaining of this pattern. So for round one, it is doing two split single crochets into the first stitch, and then we're going to do split single crochets into the next 15 stitches. Now, the reason why I say split single crochets is these are worked as single crochets. They will appear that way, but we're gonna do something a little bit different with these so that when we work the next round after this, we can work it with ease. So the difference between a split single crochet and a regular single crochet is really where we enter the hook. We enter the hook into the V. Now, if you wanna work this round into this top V, you can. I'm going to show you how to do that on this video. If you decide you just wanna work this round in just single crochet stitches that you're used to until the next round, that's fine too. But to work it into a double crochet, we see this V at the top of our double crochet. So there's kind of a V here and kind of a V here. We're going to insert our hook in the center of that V. And then when we bring it out the back, there's also an upside down V that we will come through. Then we're gonna yarn over, pull up a loop, and here's the most critical part of a split single crochet. We wanna pull up our loop to be the height of the stitch over here that we're working. When we're entering a bit lower on the stitch, which is what the stitch does, we want to make sure that we have enough space vertically so when we work around the next time, we don't have any issues. And I'm gonna talk more about that on the next round. So for this round, the thing you need to be conscious about is pulling this up, this loop up a little bit more than you normally do. Even if you're just working simple single crochet stitches, it's a good idea to do so. So I'm going to be placing uh, two stitches in the first, and then I'm going to mark the first stitch of the round. And then we're following in that same pattern repeat for this size, where I'm going to continue to work at this repeat all the way around. So now I will do 15 split single crochets or regular cro single crochets if you prefer. And I'm gonna repeat that until we get back. And then the next round is where we're going to be bringing in another color. Now, as I work my way back around, I've got this half double crochet. I'm gonna do my best to just work into that one. And then the last one, which is a single crochet. And now we are back around to the beginning of our round. You can kind of see where these stitches are starting to look a bit more knit-like and they'll really take shape on this next round. Now we increased on this round one of the color work. For round two, we're not. 
The way that this lays out, we're gonna be increasing about every other round. It's adjusted a bit for the color work and the pattern, but we wanna keep this nice, um, you know, circular uh, pattern going here. So what we will want to do next is we wanna grab our color B, cause that's coming in on this round. So the nice thing is we don't have to worry about increasing. So it gives us time to really focus on our color changes and our split single crochet stitches before we add in any more increasing. So to start this round, we will start by doing single split single crochets in the first five. So I did increase this round below but I'll simply, I, I see these V's and I'm gonna be working into those individually. So I'm gonna do my first split single crochet. And once again, be sure to pull this up to the height that is higher than you normally would for a regular single crochet. That way when you're working this um, in the round, when you come back to that stitch again, it's easy to work into. So as I insert my hook in between the V's, it should go really easily and come out underneath the V underneath on the underneath side. If it doesn't go easily, then you need to pull this magic loop up more and really relax your tension. This should not hurt your hands at all. This should eventually be as simple as a single crochet stitch. I understand the first time you're learning, this stitch is gonna feel a little bit awkward because it's not the same muscle memory as a regular single crochet. You will be working it a little bit different by pulling that up more before you complete the stitch. It's okay to slow down here and really get the momentum of this new stitch so that when you're entering for every single stitch, it works just easily. So I have done four, two, three, four. This is my fifth stitch. I haven't completed it because I'm gonna show you why. When I'm working and now I know I need to change colors on my next stitch for my color B, I stop right here because this is how we're gonna change colors. We're gonna yarn over with our new color and pull through both of the loops on the hook. And now we're ready to work at our new color for the next stitch. So the next one is just simply one in B and then we're gonna switch back and we're gonna go to A. And then we're going to be working A for seven stitches. Now here's what I wanna talk about here. When you're working across a lot of stitches, you will want to carry your yarn on the back. I'm not saying to crochet over it for every single stitch because you, I mean, you can, it just makes your fabric a bit thicker and where this doesn't need to be reversible, it's not necessary and it won't pop through the front as much if we're not catching it every single stitch. So when I need to catch a stitch, what I will do is I will insert my hook, lay the color that I'm floating on the back across the hook, then complete the stitch with my current color. Notice how that captures that stitch, that float on the back, because if I were to, to float this for seven stitches, it would become a really long strand that could catch on things and will affect our gauge in a negative way. So I'm gonna keep on going, and I don't like to go more than three stitches before I catch the yarn again or I float it on the back. Um, where these stitches are quite large, I might even do it more often, just kind of determining what I like on the back, but these are good. They're not tight, they're a little bit loose, they have some space. They're not pulling on the stitch back here that I worked, and we can just keep on going. So after completing seven stitches, now I'm gonna go back to my color B for one stitch, and then back to my color A. And that is how you work the color work round and around and around. And notice now you can really see that knit look stitch happening. I'm going to do quite a bit off camera and come back when I've got a bit more of this color work worked up and then we'll talk about a few more things. But at this point you have all the information you need to continue to work from the chart or the written instruction to complete this portion of the color work. I do wanna add, I've had some questions lately about how I place my yarn so that they don't get tangled. And I just wanna talk about that for a second. Sometimes I will put one skein of yarn on the left side and one on the right side, and that way it helps visually to not get them as tangled. But the key is when you're working your stitches, whichever way you pick it up from is the way that you're going to place it back. So let me get to this next part here where I change colors. So 
So now I'm going to change colors and this is on the left side. So I'm going to drop it to my left. Then I'm going to pick up this yarn from my right side, finish that stitch, work the next one. And when I put this yarn back down, I'm going to throw it to the right side and pick up the one from the left. What that does is when you pick it up from whatever side it's on and then you put it back down, it will help prevent these from getting twisted. And if they do get twisted, that's okay. Just quickly untwist them when they start to bother you or affect your gauge. Um, the other thing you can do if you are really good at doing crochet color work is you can put both strands of yarn into one hand. Sometimes I like to do this. Sometimes I do not. It just depends on my mood. And sometimes it also depends on the yarn and how far I'm carrying it. But you can work from one hand and they do sell really cool tools for your fingers that you can put on your fingers that will help um, keep the yarn separated if you choose to do those. But I do find when I'm doing Fair Isle, sometimes it's harder. And this is why when I try to float this, it, I'm trying to cross strands here. So this is what I have to say about color work. Yes, it is slower usually for most people, even for myself, I do this all the time. It is slower for me to do color work than it is to do a lot of other stitches. So I like to prepare myself for that, slow myself down, enjoy the process and accept that it's going to take a little bit longer to do, but it's so worth it for the end result. And I really like taking my time to be with the yarn and see the images that work up because it's like one stitch is one pixel to this image that I'm going to be working up here and it's going to be absolutely stunning. So keep working on that and then come on back and I'm going to come back when I've worked quite a few more rounds and we're going to talk about carrying three strands in a round. This thing is a beast. So much of it is sitting in my lap like a cozy warm blanket. And I have been working a couple rounds where we are carrying the three colors. So we've got three strands going on here. And I'm not going to lie to you, occasionally your strands may get tangled and that's okay. Just take a second and untangle them if it really gets bothersome. But for the most part, if you pick up and put down where they go, it's helpful. So the biggest thing for this is just being conscious of carrying the yarn on the back. So I'm going to show you the back here. I've got a lot of these yarn floats going on. So front's really, really pretty. And we've got these floats on the back. Since this side won't be seen, I think it's best to float it. That way we don't have any colors peeking through. And this is a really sharp image that we're creating. So when I did this first round with the uh, color C, it was really only being used so many stitches. That is such a long float. So I made sure that I was catching it every so often until I used it again. So that will be the most difficult part of these rounds carrying three strands is just making sure that you're catching your yarn so that it's not pulling or tugging and it's laying flat on the back. So I'm going to work a little bit here just to kind of show you um, some good practices when carrying three yarns. I'm going to move my stitch marker. And so for this next section, I have got quite a bit of color C. So I'm, I'm pulling through the last stitch worked with the color C and now I'm ready to work it. We won't be increasing for this round and I'm going to enter the first stitch and then I'm going to mark it. I'm going to do another stitch and then here's where we want to be conscious. We have to carry these two strands across these six stitches at at least one point. So the last time that I used my color A is way over here. So for my next stitch, it's time to insert, grab the color A and work around it. And then notice for the next stitch, it's been a while since I have floated color B. So then I will grab color B behind my hook and float that one and then just kind of lay them back where they go. Now notice I may have gotten in a little tangle here. Oh, I did good. But if you do, it's okay. You just untwist them once they get bothersome. And then I'm going to complete the next two stitches. And now I would probably maybe right here, go ahead and grab the color A again because I'm not using it for a little while. Now I'm going to go to the color B for two stitches. And then notice how I just want to be conscious about when the color A is going to be worked again. And then eventually I'll have to carry some of the color C. So 
So as I work my color B here, I'm actually gonna work over the color C since it's been a while since I've done the color C. So the trick to working three strands at once is really paying attention to either the, I find the visual chart to be great, but you do have a visual in front of you or the written pattern and simply looking at when's the last time I floated a color that might be way back here and what do I have coming up to be conscious about, you know, where I want to be floating yarn on the back. So these rounds, when you're working three colors, I'm going to be honest with you, they do take a little bit more time and that's okay. Just enjoy it. Be sure to be floating the colors on the back of your work nice and flat. So you've got some nice floats going that aren't pulling or tugging or messing with the fabric gauge on the front and then work those up and we'll go clear to the end of this pattern. So you'll only be working the three colors at once for about, I think it's five rounds five about five rounds and then it will drop back off to just two colors to finish it out so keep on working that and come back when you've got all the color work done so now that i've worked my last round in a solid color it's time for me to fasten off and i just love the way that this color work worked up it's a bit of a bulky project for your lap it can get a little bit heavy so be sure to take some breaks so that you don't um, feel a lot of straining in your hands or shoulders now for the very last part of this, I am going to do what's called an invisible join. So I'm going to take out my stitch marker and in the next stitch, I'm going to enter my yarn right to the top of that V. And now I'm going to place my yarn down through the top of the last stitch worked. And what that does is it creates kind of a V on top here that helps hide where our pattern ends and brings that together so we don't have a huge jog. Then I can weave in my end, fasten off, block this because I do think it was, could do with a really good blocking before putting it under the tree. And then you have a beautiful new tree skirt. I am loving this, this color work pattern on this. Now I really do want to put tassels on mine. I'm going to confess I wanted to do this color tassels on every single point here, but based on the tassel that my puppy chewed up this week from a pillow pattern I have, I think that would be a mistake and I might get really angry at her when she goes ahead and uses all the tassels as a chew toy. So unfortunately I'm going to have to skip that for my lifestyle, but if you want to put tassels on, I really do think that would be a very beautiful touch for this pattern. Thank you so much for joining me. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back for your next project soon.